free. It's an innovation revolution in healthcare. Though the technological aspects of this revolution are relatively new, healthcare has always been a large part of the human experience. In fact, look at the image behind me. Many of us will recognize this as the creation of Adam by Michelangelo. We can all appreciate Michelangelo's attention to detail, as well as his ability to really bring out the human form in his artwork. I recently also learned that Michelangelo actually spent a lot of time in nearby hospitals, working on and dissecting human bodies. Many say this is what actually gave him the ability to really bring out the human body in his work. A recently published journal article also mentions that Michelangelo was so intrigued by human physiology and medicine that he often integrated these works very subtly into his art. In fact, this article proposes that in this very piece, Michelangelo integrated the human brain, perfect to every detail. When I read this, I was astonished to see how important the body was to some of the greatest minds history. Today, this appreciation for the human body in both sickness and in health, as a part of the larger human experience, has been more broadly defined as healthcare. Healthcare has been the cornerstone of civilizations for thousands of years, and has undergone numerous changes thanks to innovation. Indeed, Healthcare innovation has played a significant role in transforming the societal health outcomes. However, healthcare innovation often brings with it significant bioethical considerations that we don't even think about until it's too late to do anything about it. This phenomenon is what my work over the past few years has been dedicated to, to educate myself and the public on how to move away from analyzing these costs in a retrospective, after-the-fact manner to instead engage in a prospective analysis of where healthcare innovation should go. Two areas which I believe we need deeper conversations as to the cost versus the benefits are first, the ethical implications behind gene editing technology, and second, the changing models in how we are delivering healthcare to our consumers. However, before delving into these topics, I think it's necessary and only fair that we recognize that certain innovations have faced little ethical opposition over the years, as their benefits to society have been so, so purely positive. This picture, for example, takes us back almost 90 years ago, when Alexander Fleming discovered the first antibiotic, penicillin. This discovery was so fundamental and critical to many of the treatments that we still use today, and it was therefore a clear success. Thought innovations, such as instituting frameworks for medical procedures, as well as hygiene protocols, have been instrumental in decreasing patient mortality and hospital ward infection rates. More recently, the advent of medical devices, such as health monitors and fitness trackers, have been instrumental in empowering the individual to take ownership over their own health. These are just a few examples of innovations that have clearly been beneficial to mankind. However, as I mentioned, not all innovations can be so easily categorized as purely beneficial. A growing area in medicine now is a movement towards gene, gene intervention. In fact, with the help of gene editing technology, scientists can now find and replace DNA sequences that code for specific diseases before they can even express themselves. As a therapeutic model, for example, if a patient comes in with a family history of a genetic disease, a clinician can actually use this technology to find the DNA sequence that codes for that disease and eliminate it before the patient sees any symptoms of it. The therapeutic models seem so beneficial. However, as soon as scientists start to develop this technology for disease management, private companies start to commercialize the same technique for cosmetic applications. In fact, these companies have raised more than a billion dollars in funding since 2016. It isn't that far away or that far fetched. This picture shows us an image of two mice, and we see that the mouse on the left is actually slightly different. What's interesting is that they're both of the same species, and they're both identical. 
However, the mouse on the left has actually undergone therapy using this gene editing technology to alter its genes affecting hair growth. This picture shows us the daring possibilities of how far this technology can go. However, this brings me back to my original thought question. At what cost are we going to blindly accept the benefits of this innovation while ignoring the potential abuses behind it? Imagine a world where an individual with the right financial resources can use this, use this technology to create children with better vision, better strength, and even better cognitive capabilities than their peers. These children would outrank their peers in both the classroom and playing fields. How will we as society accept and accommodate these children? And how far before this technology comes out of scale that creates an entire generation of laboratory synthesized designer individuals? These are the conversations that we must engage in. And these are the challenges that we must pose for ourselves. Without doing so, the potential abuse of this technology may take us to a point of no return, fundamentally altering the variability and diversity which makes us so beautifully human. Similarly challenging questions arise when we start to look at the changing ways in which we are delivering healthcare to our consumers. An emerging trend in medicine now is the push towards healthcare automation with a specific eye to making healthcare outcomes more consistent and process-oriented. Now, there are a few ways to make healthcare outcomes more process-oriented. One way is to actually institute protocols on a clinician's diagnostic process. That is, if a patient presents with symptoms A and B, then we could actually institute specific protocols on that clinician saying that the clinician must prescribe drug X in that situation. However, if anyone's been to a doctor, we know that that's not really how clinical medicine works. Every person is as unique as a fingerprint, and no disease presents the same exact way in two different people. Instead, diagnostics is actually based on being able to match a set of symptoms with specific criteria and definitions that have been developed over large sample sizes. Thus, scientists instead start to create databases that can actually house these large volumes of sample sizes and data that maybe clinicians can then call upon as needed. This has since led to an entire industry based around developing these databases and integrating them into healthcare, artificial intelligence, or AI systems. In fact, some of these systems have now become so advanced that they can read and comprehend more than a million pages of medical text in less than three seconds. Experts contend that these systems, once made more autonomous and become easier to use, they can actually replace human clinicians outright. In fact, the market research for this shows that in 2018 alone, the healthcare automation market will surpass $1.6 billion. Indeed, there's a very real possibility that many of us sitting in this room will soon be interacting with an automated robotic clinician as our first point of contact. However, while proponents of autonomous healthcare models may tout many benefits, the reality of clinical medicine shows the immense difficulties behind replacing human clinicians. A great example can be seen in an emergency room situation, where, which demonstrates us so well that clinicians are trained beyond just complex physiology, but are also trained in the ability to prioritize and triage in the face of complex care options. That is, given two different patients with two different medical emergencies, a good clinician will be able to isolate the situation such that he can work on both of them and hopefully rescue both of them. Data-driven platforms fail at this exercise every time. A recent study was conducted which found that when an automated robot system was given one dummy patient to save, it actually did a pretty good job of saving that patient. When that same automated system, however, was provided with two dummy patients at the same time, it couldn't figure out which one to devote its resources to. In fact, 14 out of 33 times, that is, nearly half the times, the automated robot system ended up killing not only one, but both those patients. This shows us the value of the human touch. 
A human clinician in the same scenario would have done everything possible to try, to try and resuscitate both those patients. These systems base their decisions purely on algorithms and data, eliminating the possibility of having a humane judgment call. This should bring us some larger perspectives. Really, this paradigm to so other ethical conundrums, such as palliative or end of life care. An automated healthcare system may be able to determine the statistically favorable option that a patient should pursue. However, the realities of clinical medicine once again show us the best medicine provided when a clinician is able to understand that sometimes the best care that we can provide to a terminally ill patient is that which prioritizes quality of life over longevity, defying all statistical laws. Healthcare systems that base their decisions purely on outcomes will fail at this critical pain point every time, because no amount of statistical significance can outweigh a clinician's ability to connect with and understand their patient. We as society must remember the purpose behind healthcare is not only to achieve successful health outcomes, but to do so while maintaining and cultivating the patient-clinician relationship. In a larger perspective, finding this balance and maintaining this relationship is the key to healthcare. It is also the key to successful healthcare innovation, whether it be regarding gene editing technology or healthcare automation. We must also recall from generations before us, as portrayed so well by Michelangelo, the cultivation of the human body is key to the human experience. Therefore, the, the challenge ahead of us now is to figure out how best to find this balance and still appreciate the human body. Thus, the challenge before us now, the challenge of the centuries of innovation to come, and the challenge I present to you moving forward it's a transition from asking, can we do it, to instead start asking, should we do it? Thank you.